Michio Kaku predicts alien contact. Michio Kaku has gained a reputation as a renowned physicist and futurist, having written numerous books on scientific topics, gained popularity as a presenter, and achieved recognition as the co-founder of string field theory, he is well regarded as an authority in the field of science. Michio made headlines when he claimed that humans would encounter alien life forms within this century. Michio stated, I think we will pick up a signal from an intelligent civilization in outer space in this century. However, that doesn't mean we'll have a two-way conversation. They could be many hundreds of light years away, so it would take hundreds of years for a conversation to take place. But when that takes place, when we do eavesdrop on an intelligent civilization in outer space, that could be a turning point in the history of civilization on Earth. He claims that life throughout the Milky Way is inevitable, adding that when we look out into the night sky, we must realize that someone could be looking back, also wondering if other life forms may exist in our solar system. Michio also claims that we won't just find any signs of life, but also intelligent life. Our galaxy is potentially packed with billions of Earth-like planets that could host a variety of different life forms. Although the actual number of exoplanets far exceeds the 4,000 that have already been recorded and verified, the number of Earth-like planets in our galaxy is estimated to be around 6 billion. Michio explains that when we do encounter life on other planets, we would first need to determine what category of species they are breaking them down into three types. Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 civilizations. A Type 1 civilization would be roughly 100 years more advanced than our current state on Earth. A Type 2 civilization would be stellar and would be a few thousand years ahead of us. A Type 3 civilization would be over a hundred thousand years more advanced, be able to control black holes and roam space at will. Kaku highlights the dangers we face when encountering other life forms, as we are Type Zero. After intercepting otherworldly messages, he claims we would need to identify the type of civilization they are and the threat they pose. Though Michio thinks that for the most part they will leave us be, as there's no need to plunder our planet for resources, but they will no doubt be curious. The exoplanet TOI-1231b Out of all the space mysteries that haunt our minds, perhaps one of the biggest revolves around a single question. Are we truly alone in this seemingly endless black void? That thought alone might evoke scary images of aliens and potential space warfare. However, scientists have yet to discover those classic big-headed and big-eyed aliens. What they have found instead is their everlasting search for life beyond Earth are several planets that could fundamentally change how we view atmospheric composition and planetary formation. One of those planets, or should we say exoplanets, is called planet TOI-1231b, existing at just 90 light-years away. It orbits around a red dwarf star and is about three and a half times the size of Earth. In comparison to what we know in our solar system, it has a similar gaseous climate to that of Neptune. As noted by scientists, it is one of the coolest and comparatively small planets known to date. Exoplanets are large bodies extending beyond our solar system that orbit other stars. In general, they mostly exist in a small region of our Milky Way galaxy in the thousands and rising. As the technologies of space exploration only get more advanced and ambitious, we could see the number of exoplanets increase to the tens of thousands within a decade. Although we cannot exactly go jump ship and live on planet TOI-1231b due to its small size, its Neptune-sized existence offers a fantastic opportunity for scientists to capture one of the first barcode-type readings of its atmosphere. Perhaps those readings will help us to locate similar worlds. The core of massive dying galaxies already formed 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. Galaxies can be considered alive, dead or quenching. Alive galaxies possess current star formation activity, indicating that stars are still being created. Dead galaxies, on the other hand, possess no star formation activity. 
quenching galaxies exist somewhere in the middle, but they do not have very much star formation going on. Researchers determine the life level of galaxies by using the spectrum of brightness. Recently, a team of researchers in the Cosmic Dawn Center at the National Observatory of Japan and the Niles Bohr Institute found a distant faded galaxy that seems to have ended life 1.5 billion years ago, one billion years earlier than previous studies and measurements indicated. This massive galaxy houses more than a trillion stars and is the most distant of its kind to be discovered. However, the research team found that the core of the galaxy seemed to be fully formed only 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang. Masayuki Tanaka, a co-author of the paper and an associate professor of astronomical science at the Graduate University for Advanced Studies and Japan's National Astronomical Observatory, said, The previous measurement of this kind was made when the universe was 2.5 billion years old. We pushed the record up to 1.5 billion years and found, to our surprise, that the core was already pretty mature. The goal here is to understand why and how galaxies fade away. Francesco Valentino, a co-author of the paper and an assistant professor at Copenhagen's Cosmic Dawn Center said, The suppressed star formation tells you that a galaxy is dying, but that is exactly the kind of galaxy we want to study in detail to understand why quenching occurs. Astronomers postulate that massive galaxies like the one in this study are historically the first to die. Scientists further assert that studying these galaxies will tell us why quenching occurs. Understanding how galaxies form, flourish, quench and eventually die is crucial to obtaining a fuller picture of how our universe works. Hopefully, as scientists and astrophysicists continue to research these galaxies, we will learn what truly makes them tick. New Methods for Predicting Solar Storms An element of weather that you might not even be aware of actually affects life on Earth much more than people realize. Solar flares are high-energy radiation that erupts from the Sun's surface, resulting in space weather that affects satellites orbiting Earth and can even short out electrical power grids. One of the largest solar flares occurred in 1859, decades before there were satellites or electrical grids to affect but another similarly large explosion could be catastrophic for us now in the 21st century. Needless to say, predicting when these flares might occur is vital in order to prevent or minimize these damages, but how would one go about predicting when a gigantic mass of flaming gas is going to erupt into another solar flare? Luckily, scientists have recently developed a new method for predicting these storms, and it seems to be much more accurate than previous methods. After much work with theoretical mathematical models attempting to understand why solar flares happen and exactly what happens as they burst, scientists were finally able to come up with a physical model using NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, or the SDO. With the data gathered from the SDO, they were able to create a three-dimensional map of the Sun and its relevant magnetic charges. Although the true causes of solar flares are still a mystery, the flares themselves are an explosion of magnetic energy, so scientists figured that mapping the magnetic zones of the Sun would be the first step in predicting when and where the flares would occur. Since magnetic fields cannot be viewed directly, scientists working on the project developed software that can calculate the fields in three dimensions and create a map of the zones. They then look for locations where the magnetic fields reconnect and create instability which could indicate the start of a flare. Kenya Cassano, one of the lead scientists on the project, spoke to Earth Sky about their model, comparing it to detecting where an avalanche will occur by looking at the amount of snow on a mountain and guessing how large of a collapse will result from a crack at any location. As it currently stands, the program takes several hours to make a single prediction, but has still managed to predict seven of the nine most recent solar flares, which were all X-class flares. Additionally, despite only being in the conceptual stages, it correctly estimated the exact location and power of each flare. Although the researchers are hoping to be able to streamline the process in order to quickly provide more accurate predictions, right now the current method is breaking ground as the first reliable method of predicting these huge, potentially damaging solar flares. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? 
Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.